Thank you for joining us today here at Charisma Christian Center. Let me go straight to the Word of God. What if I told you that if you do this one thing, everybody say just one thing. Everybody say just one thing. For those of you who are watching online, just type it in. Everybody, put it there, one thing. Everybody say one thing. If you do this one thing, you will have five benefits. That's a good uh, exchange, right? Do one thing, five benefits. Or everybody say five blessings. This is what will happen if you do this one thing. Number one, you will have more hope and you'll become healthier. How many of you need more hope right now? Amen. How many of you need to be healthy, right? So that we could fight that virus, right? If you do this one thing, you'll be more hopeful and healthier. Not only that, if you do this one thing, everybody, how many of you need to improve your sleep? Sleep quality, amen? You already tried the advertisement, Sleep Country USA, why are the batteries? But you're still having insomnia, right? What if you do this one thing, it will improve your sleep quality? Not only that, if you do this one thing, you increase your self-esteem. You'll be confident. You'll not be uh, insecure. Not only that, you will have more hope, healthier, improve your sleep quality, and your self-confidence will rise up. Not only that, increase your helpfulness and empathy. What's empathy? You'll be nice people. You'll be kind to other people. You'll be nice to hang around with and not only that if you do this one thing it will increase your mental and emotional resilience you want to know what is that one thing i want to ask you do you want to know what is that one thing yes. be grateful yes. be thankful scientifically proven look at findings from newsweek five scientifically proven benefits of gratitude they did uh, a survey with the Vietnam vets, the people who came from Vietnam uh, War, those who are more grateful, they have lower score on PTSD. That's why it's scientifically proven that gratefulness is a good thing. That's why God says it's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. Now, another book that I would like to propose is it's called Gratitude Works. Look at what they said about gratitude. You'll be happier. You know, lonely people are ungrateful people. And grateful people are happy people. Sleep 30 minutes more per night. You know, when I see this, I don't get offended anymore when I see people sleeping while I'm preaching. Before I get offended, maybe they're bored. No, they're not bored. They are grateful. <laughs> Last Thursday, I saw Malia very grateful. <laughs> when I was preaching, she just started sleeping and opened her mouth. <laughs> I said, oh, it's okay, just don't snore. <laughs> you sleep more. When you're grateful, you exercise 33% more. When you're grateful, how about this? Your blood pressure goes down. Oh, I told my wife, if you're grateful, it decreased dietary fat intake by 20%. When I told her that, he started saying, thank you, James. Thank you, James. Thank you, James. Keep taking for everything, right? You lose weight. I'm telling you, gratitude works. So here's what they said. Researchers have scientifically proven one of the greatest contributors to happiness in your life is how much gratitude you show. So I want you to say this with me. We're going to put it on the screen. In everything, give thanks. One, two, three. In everything, give thanks. Let's read this verse together. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ. Do you notice God did not say give thanks for all? God doesn't want you to thank God for COVID. God doesn't want you to thank God for cancer. God doesn't want you to thank God for probably some problems that happen in your life or death, like what happened in my family. But God is asking us, in, sp in spite of the COVID, in spite of the death in your family, in spite of whatever circumstances, give thanks to the Lord because we know God is still in control. Amen, somebody. So that is 
in everything give thanks. Why is it very important to be thankful? Feel, here's the big idea. Feeling thankful and not expressing it is like wrapping a gift and not giving it. Right? You're, I'm sure you're exp you're, you already have in mind the gifts you want to give to your friends. Or you have friends giving this weekend or, or Christmas. You wrap the gift and you don't give it. That's what happens when you are grateful and you don't say it, you don't express it. It's like wrapping a gift and not giving it. You know, gratitude is very powerful. I want to share to you from the scripture, this is the masterpiece. One of the masterpieces of this great man of God, his name is King David. It's Psalm 103. I want you to read this together at the count of three. One, two, three. Those of you who are watching online, one, two, three. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Can I ask you a question? How could you bless the Lord? How could you bless someone who has everything he needs? Like if you have a friend, oh, how can I bless this person? He has a good job. He has all that he needs in life. What else does he need? Sometimes we ask, how can we bless God who don't need anything who is the creator of the universe? How can you bless a person who doesn't need anything? But God commanded us to bless the Lord, oh my soul. And you know one thing that God needs? He needs your worship. Amen, somebody. Amen. He needs your praise. That's why showing up to church and watching us online, it's a blessing and it's an expression. You are praising the Lord. Come on, somebody. You are praising the Lord. Now, how do we bless the Lord? Is we express our praise. Let's all read this together. And I just, I'm still old school when it comes to reading the Word of God. Can I ask you, Charisma, who are here in person, would you stand up on your feet? And those of you who are watching online, could you just read this aloud? Let's all read this aloud, especially as we prepare our hearts for Thanksgiving. Everybody, one, two, three. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, that your life or your youth is renewed like the eagles. At the count of three, say praise the Lord. One, two, three. Amen. You cannot be seated. You know, it would be a shame if we are just thankful during Thanksgiving Day. That will be a big, 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 big no-no, right? Because every day above the ground is a good day. How to live a life of Thanksgiving, that is what I want to share to all of us. That Thanksgiving should not be a holiday, it just be a normal day. It will be an everyday occasion. And Thanksgiving Day is awesome, right? Just remind us. So I see here three important truths about gratitude. Number one, would you please say this with me? Gratitude is a choice. Everybody say gratitude is a choice. You know why you need to choose gratitude? You will not just stumble to gratitude. Because by nature... We are all complainers, amen? By nature, we're all uh, a little bit negative. By nature, we are hard to please. That's why you need to make a choice, a conscious choice to be grateful. Listen to what the Bible says. Let's all read this together. Praise the Lord, my soul. Have you noticed? David is talking to himself. This is like a note to myself. David is saying to himself, David, my soul, praise the Lord. David, all my inmost being, you praise the Lord. David, praise his holy name, my soul. Do you ever talk to yourself? You need that, right? To have yourself talk, right? Just hoping it doesn't talk back to you. <laughs> Just kidding. So one time, this single dad was pushing his push cart in, in the grocery store, and the baby started crying. 
and started crying. You know, kids, sometimes they cry wherever, pub, in public, they started crying. And so this, this man was saying, Mark, it's okay, Mark, it's okay, you got this, Mark. It's okay, Mark, you could do this, you got this, Mark. And some, some of the, and some of the, the people uh, hearing and said, oh, wow, you're a very patient man. You're a very patient man to your, to, your, to your baby. No, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Sometimes you need to have that moment when you talk to yourself and telling yourself because yourself tends to go to the negative, to the left side, and then you say, hey, don't go there. Don't follow the ways of the world. Be kind. Don't go to their level. Don't post that. Don't say that. So some, this is what David is saying. He's talking to himself and he's commanding himself. It's a gratitude. It's a choice. Case in point. This is one of the amazing stories. Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Been into two concentration camps during the Nazis. That's his picture with the circle. His wife and family and jewelry taken away from him. And they, even his dignity made him suffer in that concentration camp. But in spite of all of what he had been through, like leaving hell on earth, listen to what he said. My attitude is the only thing I have complete control over. In what's going on right now, we cannot control what the media says. We cannot control what other people think about you. We cannot control what's happening in the government. We cannot control over this virus. But there's one thing you could control. is your attitude. And this man chose his attitude that in spite of what he's been going through, I'll be grateful. And listen to what he said. A person can almost be defined by his or her attitude toward gratitude. You know what he's saying? You can tell a person by what he's defined, whether he is ungrateful or grateful. When people look at you, how do they define you? That person is a very grateful person. Or that person is a very ungrateful person. This is from Father Henry Nguyen, one of our the authorities in our coaching network that we they asked us to read their, his, his books his amazing catholic priest this is what he said about gratitude can we put it on the screen and charisma could we all read this together one two three gratitude as a discipline involves a conscious choice i can choose to be grateful even when my emotions and feelings are still stiff in hurt and resentment it is amazing how many occasions present themselves in which I can choose gratitude instead, instead of complain. That is from Father Henry Nguyen. And in the words of Joyce Meyer, we know his, her famous saying, you rejoice by choice. Everybody say gratitude is a choice. Gratitude. You know, there's a verse in the book of Acts. I just forgot to put it there. Apostle Paul, when he was about to face the court under the Caesar, uh, King, King Agrippa, the powerful man, he could behead his, uh, his head. You know what he said? I think myself happy. He said that. Would you say this with me? One, two, three. I think myself. Come on, say it again. I think myself. That's in the Bible. I think myself. Say it again. I think myself happy. You know why he was saying that? Because here's the thing. Mood set is affected by your mindset. If you have a bad mood, check what's going on here. What have you been thinking lately? So Paul was saying, I think myself happy. Why? It's a conscious decision to think happy thoughts now we translate that in our lives in the midst of what's going on here you you try to be selective in the way you approach this life in the way that you think and you choose to be grateful in spite of everything and the bad things that's happened to you number two david is not asking us just to make a decision to call out to your, yourself and be grateful 
Then he said, gratitude is remembering. Everybody say remembering. 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 Everybody read together. Praise the Lord, all oh my soul, and forget not. Forget not. You know, if you are married, how many of you have experienced this? Sometimes your spouse will always remind you of the bad things that happened in the past. The words that you said, they will even describe the color of the t-shirt that you're wearing. But you usually forget the good things that you have done. You know what I'm talking about, right? Because by nature, we tend to remember the negative more than the positive. And you know, a grateful person, we are grateful in life. When we go from taking things for granted and we begin to see them as granted, there's a big difference. A lot of times we take for granted your job. So I'm like, well, why should I thank God for my job? I don't get paid much. At least you have a job. Come on, somebody. Do you think it's granted you have a job? Don't take that for granted. Your family, your spouse, your partner, your loved ones, spend time with them. And I thank God that we cherish every moment that I, we had with our father who just passed, have our attention, and then we will be watching the doom and gloom scenario, and then we will, they will go to bed with that and sleep on it, and we'll be afraid and anxious and fearful. And then when it comes to the positive ones, it's like, it's this slide. Case in point, here's a prophet. A prophet, his name is Jeremiah. He wrote a book. The, the title in itself is, a, is really uh, a negative. You know, have you ever read of the book of Lamentation? Lament. It's lamenting. It's just like belly aching here about this experience of they lost everything. They're not just quarantined. They were exiled to Babylon for more than 50-something years. And listen to what he said. Let's read this together. Lamentations 3, 19 to 23. Everybody read together. I remember. Remember? It's focused on the negative. My affliction, my wandering, my bitterness in the girl. I will remember them. And my... Have you noticed? Mindset affects mood set. Because his focus is my affliction, my wandering, my bitterness, the girl... And, and my soul is downcast. This is like he was lamenting. And this is like the A, B, C, D, E, F, G of all the negativity. He would say, A is for agony. B is for bitterness. C is for confused. D is for depressed. E is for envy. F is I'm frustrated. G, help me out. What's a negative word for G? Grumble. <laughs> in Tagalog, grabe. A, B, C, D, F, G, H. In the words of my late father, horrible. He always say horrible. H, I. I. I don't know, no, no, no. I. Help me out. Irritated. Yeah, yeah. You irritate me. H, I, J. I'm jealous, K. Kill joy. Oh, that's enough. <laughs> so he was just having a litany of all of the negativity, bitterness, God, and all this thing. But here's one thing he did. Everybody say, yet I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Did you notice? Now he switched his memory. It's called selective memory. And he looked at, he said, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. Can we say that today, Charisma? Because of the, great, the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. Why? For his compassions never fail. They are what? New. Every morning. That's remembering. Now, gratitude is not just a choice. And then remembering, it must be specific. 
That's why when somebody will come up to you, hey, thank you, James. And then I say, for what? Right? My wife and I, when, we, when our kids will confess something bad, mommy, daddy, I'm sorry, I did something bad. We will not just let it go. We say, what did you do? Confess it, own it up. That's part of being specific. So when people say, it's like the other day, I said, hey, uh, Elizabeth, thank you. Elizabeth told me for what? Oh, thank you for the edible flowers. Oh, I said, Lorraine, thank you. For what? Thank you for that blanket that my, my mom saw it and started crying. So those the pictures there. It's supposed to be specific. So let's go one by one. Some of the blessings that probably you have taken for granted. Number one is this. Listen to what the Bible says. Forget not all these benefits. What's the number one blessing? Who forgives all your sins. How much for forgiveness God will give to you? Some of your sins or all of your sins? We just sang a song today. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Can I just ask you this? Where would we be if there's no Christmas? Where would we be if there's no Good Friday? Where would we be if there's no Easter Sunday? What kind of world would we be living in? Right? We're all doomed to go to hell. But God stepped in, in the midst of our sins. He took our place and he died for us. That in itself should be the number one reason why you should be grateful. Remember, God has forgiven you. Everybody say, remember, God has forgiven you. Pastor Richard alluded to him while he was worshiping. I thank God you forgave my sins. Praise the Lord for that. And then just the fact that God has forgiven us, can I ask you this? Because the Lord has forgiven you, forgive people who hurt you, who did something wrong, especially these holidays, and you will carry that bitterness, that resentment towards somebody who did you something wrong to you. You will, you will not enjoy these holidays. Because bitterness is like a poison. Let it go. And remember, if God has forgiven your sins, forgive that person who did something wrong to you. And another blessing that God wants you to be specific is He heals all your diseases. God is our healer. Amen? We've been affected, infected. Some go through this COVID and things like that. But praise the Lord, God heals us. And then I want you to see here, David prophesied something about the totality of our healing. That God will not just heal you physically here on earth, but He will heal you eternally, for eternity. Everybody is together. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. What's the meaning of that? 1,000 years before Jesus died on the cross, David prophesied, you will not allow your faithful one, the Holy One, Jesus Christ, see decay. Meaning, yes, Jesus will die, but he will not face decay because in, in a span of three days, he rose again from the dead. Look what happened in Acts chapter 2. When Peter first sermon at the book of Acts, what did he preach about? Everybody read together. He was telling the story about Jesus' resurrection. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, you will not let your Holy One see decay. What's the meaning of that, charisma? God will heal us while we're alive. And if He allow us to die, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with Jesus. Amen, somebody. So some people ask me, what happened to your dad? Did God did not heal him? No, God healed him. God healed him. And He healed him now forever. Because my dad is no longer on crutches. My dad is no longer in wheelchair. He's jumping up and down and leaping and praising God in heaven. And my wife was telling me, maybe he's debating with Moses right now. <laughs> Lord, knowing my dad, he always wants to ask questions. And what gave me that assurance? God, 
gave me this verse this week while I was in mourning. He said, the Lord will rescue you from every evil attack. Here on earth, if you've been attacked, He will rescue you. But if He allowed it to happen, and will bring, everybody raise this together, will bring me what? Safely to His heavenly kingdom. Everybody raise together. To Him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As Christians, everybody say, we're on a win-win situation. Amen? If I die, praise God, I wake up in heaven. That's why we're not afraid of death. We're not afraid of this end of the world. We know where we go for eternity in heaven. And that's a blessing. And while we're living here on earth, God taking care of our future, He says here, amazing thing. Redeems your life from the pit. And everybody say, crowns you with love and compassion. Everybody say, crowns you with love and compassion. Tell the person next to you, the Lord wants to crown you. Right? To honor you. To set you aside. Like, uh, congratulations to, to uh, Yuto, right? Crown as the uh, bantamweight champion, right? He was set aside. Because, and then that's crowned. Congratulations to Dog as another champion. He was crowned with the, with the sword or with the, what you call it, with the medal set aside. And then congratulations in advance to our athlete, Asha. In advance, you're going to be crowned there. Hang in there. A few more weeks. You could eat. <laughs> crown. We're working for that moment, for that crowning moment. And here's what God says. I'm going to crown you not just with a medal, not just with a sword, with love and compassion. Now, the Bible, the Old Testament is written in Hebrew. That's the, the language of the Bible. That's why in Israel they speak Hebrew. There is one word in the Bible repeated more than 200 times. The most repeated word in the Bible is the word hesed. Everybody say hesed. This is so powerful. This verse in one, one word in Hebrew cannot be translated in one word in English because it's so rich, it's so powerful. When a person is kind to you, the Jewish people have said, thank you for being hesed. That's kindness. Sometimes they use this word to a husband and a wife. Thank you for staying faithful to me. Thank you for hanging in there with me. Steadfast love. And not only that, this is the most powerful word that they use. It is a covenant loyalty. Everybody say covenant loyalty. God says, I will crown you with the covenant of my loyal, steadfast love for you. Loyalty. Do you know the meaning of a contract and the difference of a contract and a covenant? A contract is something you could just rip it up. Sometimes you buy a house and you cannot pay. That contract we could be null and void because you're not doing your part. The bank will take your house. You buy a car, you lease a car, and there's a contract. You have to pay the monthly. If you don't pay, do your part. The contract is null and void will take your car back and sometimes in marriage that's what they see their relationship is just a contract if you do this i'll do this for you if you don't do this bye 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 i, I let's get get dissolve this relationship a covenant hear me out charisma a covenant is two parties making an agreement that the most powerful person who's making a promise and that's god to us humanity, I will make an agreement with you. Even you don't do your part, I'll still do my part. That's what God told the Israel. I've chosen you. I've called you. You will be set apart. And Israel back out, turned their backs on God, turned their backs on God. Of course, God allowed them to be disciplined, but because God made a covenant of His love and steadfast love for them, and God will never abandon this family or this people. Now, I want you to, to uh, uh, believe that with me, Charisma. How many times you have not done your part and your promise to God? Come on, be honest. 
How many times God remains faithful even though we were unfaithful? Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Why? Because that's has said. You know, I have a friend, uh, a Jewish brother in, in the Lord, as you met Rick, every now and then we'll talk. I'm thanking God for our people. Until now, every week, they check on me. How are you doing? Are you okay? Can I pray for you? You know, sometimes I will ask him, yeah, pray for me. And then I will ask him, hey, Rick, can you pray for me in Hebrew? Because I just love to hear the word of, in Hebrew, the uh, word language of the world. And he said, he's Jewish, he's praying over me as, like, as if like Abraham is praying for me. And, and he, he asked me to check this website. It is a rabbi, a Christian rabbi, a believer, about, about writings. And then he, he explained to me the Hesed. And this is from the, the journal of the rabbi. So that we will understand what Hesed means in our, in our layman's term. I will read it to you. Hesed is the unswerving loyalty even to the most undeserving. Hesed is an old weary father drives to the night to bail out his drug addict son from jail. Hesed is a mom who spends day and night spoon feeding and wiping out after her disabled child. Hesed is an unsung pastor's wife whose long-suffering and tearful prayers kept her exhausted husband from falling apart at the seams. Publicly, I want to thank my wife. During this bereavement, during this season of grief, you've been my rock, Sharon. Thank you. You, you, you love me. You comfort me. Thank you. That's Hesed. Hesed is the love of God that you can count on on decade after decade. Hesed is love that can be counted. It is not the thrill of romance. Get that, church. It is not the thrill of romance because our problem with the word love nowadays, especially young people, that the that, that, that thought of love is all romance. Their idea of love is uh, holding hand in hand, walking by the beach with the backdrop of the sunset, or eating romantic candlelit dinners. And so when you're, you're not experiencing it anymore, you feel lonely, and then you, there's a stranger who says, hey, I love you. You, you, you hook up with that stranger. Why? Because there's no more romance. That's not the kind of love that God is saying to you. God is saying to you, even though you're not romantic anymore with him, come on, somebody. God will still love us. Amen, somebody. Because of Hesed. God said, I will crown you with Hesed. That's why I have this hope church who, who sits on the, on the office of the president. I have this hope that God is still in charge and in control. Amen, somebody. Our future is not based on any political party. Our future is based on our chesed love of God. Amen. God is in control. The, the problem with us today is we have this develop of enlightenment and entitlement. You know, when pe people nowadays, if you feel like you're so entitled, right? That's why you're grouchy. You're, you're not easy to please because of your entitlement. We need some enlightenment. And can I just ask you today? Can I just ask you, practice selective memory. At least four things. C call to your mind. What are you thanking God for this year? At least you could put four or five. Call to your mind right now. Your family, your job, your health, clean water. The Bible said, forget, uh, forget not all things. Thank God for all things. There was a time that uh, we're having a problem with the refrigerator. And then God bless us. We bought my wife a new refrigerator. Oh, my gosh. I welcome that new refrigerator in my house. Welcome to my house. Oh, I, I want to hug you. We could have now crushed eyes. 
Oh, you're my precious. The Bible says, forget not all things. Or if you really need something to thank God for, could you just check your pulse right now? If you need something to be grateful for, check your pulse. Be thankful for the gift of life. Because here's the key issue here. The key to gratitude is the thought, I deserve nothing. That is the key to gratitude, is the thought that I deserve nothing. According to UC Davis professor, Dr. Remworth Emmons, I deserve nothing. That's why when I always teach, I always make a note to myself, calling out me, not you, calling out me. The moment you think you are old or entitled, you stop being thankful. The moment you think I'm old, I'm entitled to this, something, you stop being thankful. In conclusion, here's the reality. Realizing I had a need, I could do nothing to resolve, like salvation, sin. I'm a sinner, I cannot get out of this. Aren't you just thankful, church? God didn't say, oh, you made that mess, you clean it up. Get out of that mess. No, God didn't say, okay, you made a mess, I'll clean it up for you, I'll forgive you. He gave you grace that you don't deserve. Now, I have a prophecy to give to you. I want you to say to the person next to you, without touching them, just tell the person next to you, I see you in the Bible. Come on, say it there. I see you in the Bible. Come on, say to the person, I see you in the Bible. This is a prophecy in Isaiah regarding David. Everybody, would you read, read this with me? Everybody read together. Pay attention. Come close now. Listen carefully to my life-giving, life-nourishing words. I am making a lasting covenant commitment with you tell the person with you this is God's word for you the same I made with David sure solid enduring love I set him as a witness to the nations tell the person next to you God wants you to be an exhibit to the nations amen he wants to show you off God wants to show you off church yeah, yeah, like your uh, proud parents, right? How many of you, you show off your, oh, proud mom of an honor student, right? Oh, oh the, you, you place it on Facebook. You're showing off. Why? You're proud of your kid, and that's okay. And God is saying, I'm proud of you. God, God wants to show you off to the nations. And then God says, now I'm doing it to you. You know what God did to David? David messed up. Big time. Committed adultery. Of course, God allowed a consequence for that, but God did not change his plan. Did you know Jesus Christ is called the son of David? It's an honor. It's a title. It's a, not, not biological, but ancestor. That's why in the, in the Bible, in the Hebrew, you cannot read the word grandfather or grandmother. They have no Hebrew word for that. They have no Hebrew word. The Hebrew word for, for their ancestor is just father. That's why I called father Abraham, the ancestor of the faith. This is every father. So when you say son of David, it's a, it's a title that, wow, this Jesus Christ will come as, as from the lineage of this man. What? Who committed an adultery? What? Who murdered a person? Because God covered his sin with his hesed. Why well, I don't want you to miss that word hesed. God covers his sin with his hesed, with his love and compassion. And then God crowns him. And God is telling to you today, what I did for David, I want to do it for you. Amen, church. Do I deserve it? No. But will I receive it? Yes, God. That's why I challenge you. Don't just give thanks to the Lord once a year. I'm calling all our people and people watching online. We're going to have a responsive reading. And I'm sure you can shout, okay? Because this is a declaration of faith. Would you please stand up on your feet today? I will read the first part. And the yellow-heighted words, could you please shout it out? This is like the Hesed moment. His love endures forever, that's Hesed. 
Everybody, I want to read this together. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Give thanks to the Lord, the God of gods. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. Give thanks to Him who alone does miracles. And the moon, the stars to rule the night. He remember us in our weakness. Give thanks to the God of heaven. Let everything that has breath say, Praise the Lord. Come on, let's shout to God. Come on, let's shout to God with a voice of triumph. God, you are so good. Let's do what David does. Call yourself. Maybe you don't feel like praising God right now. I don't know what you're going through, what circumstance. But I want you, can you say, in spite of what you're going through, I want to thank God and see what will happen to your situation. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. I'm calling you out, David. I'm calling you out, Jane. I'm calling myself out. You bless the Lord. What, what all is, don't let what's wrong, what's happening wrong right now affect you to do what is right. You know what is the right thing? The right thing is to be grateful, to bless Him, to honor Him. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Let's worship Him. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Sing it again, church. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Oh, it's a good thing. Worship His holy Sing like never before, sing like never before, and oh my soul, I worship your holy. The sun comes up, it's a new day. The sun comes up, it's a new day. Dawn. Come on, it's time to sing our praise. It's time to sing our song whatever may happen whatever may pass and whatever comes before let me be singing let me be singing let's express our praise to Jesus bless the Lord oh my soul hallelujah His holy name. Sing like never before. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I worship. And on that day, when our time comes, and on that day, when my strength is hallelujah the end draws near and my time has come still still my song will sing your praise on it oh yes thank you God ten thousand years ten thousand years come on I'm calling out all of us it's time to bless the Lord praise him Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, sing like never before, oh my soul.
I wonder in our midst right now, can we just declare in one sentence, what are you grateful to God for? It doesn't matter big or small. It, what matters is you're expressing it. You're not keeping it to yourself. Because feeling grateful and not saying it, not expressing it, is like wrapping a gift and not giving it away. The Lord wants to hear His people. That in the midst of this crazy season, I'm sure God has heard a lot of complaints. God has heard a lot of complaints, of heard a lot of cursing toward God, whatever, because of this crazy situation. And God is looking for people who are grateful that in the midst of this, and I pray God will find people in Linwood today. There is no shout of complaint here. It's a shout of gratefulness to our God. I'll start it off. God, I thank you that you treat me not as what I deserve. I deserve punishment and hell, but you treated me with your kindness, your forgiveness. Thank you for forgiving my sin. Just shout it out aloud, whatever you want to be grateful to God for. Thank you, Lord, for loving me with your unconditional love. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for unconditional love. Thank you, Lord, for healing me. Amen. Thank you, God, for the healing. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of serving you. Yes, Lord, we don't take this for granted. And so, God, we make a covenant with you today that we will choose gratitude instead of giving a bad attitude. In the midst of the pain and the hurt and the question and the doubts that sometimes we run out of explanation, we choose to believe you know what's best and you're in control. And we know at the other side of this COVID, Lord, we know this will not be the end of our story. It is part of our story, but will not be the end of our story. We know God is not done with us. We know that God is not finished with us. We know that you are preparing us for greater days, for blessed days ahead of us, oh Lord. And so, God, we thank you. We choose gratitude, oh God. And we remember all the good things that the Lord has done. We will not take life for granted. We will take life as granted a blessing from heaven. And we thank you, Lord God. We will be specific, oh God. So God, I pray this week, I pray, remind us of people that you want us to, to send a text. So remind us to, to call them, oh God. Just, just to say thank you. Just to say appreciate you. And we know, Lord God, when we do that, Lord, we know, Lord God, people are will be elevated because everybody needs an encouragement nowadays so God I pray make us like those people who choose gratitude and gratefulness because we know you're attracted to people like that and you said in your word I will do to David what I'll do for you the covenant of love has said crown our life with love and compassion once again Jesus thank you that we can celebrate Thanksgiving Day because we know you are with us and for us and you will never leave us nor abandon us in Jesus name and all of God's people said amen let's give the Lord a clap of praise today amen